Hello everyone, um, we are with our first CTO Corner uh, episode in English, so uh, it's a great honor for us to have you, Greg. How are you, Greg? Doing well, all things And, considered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a difficult time, but uh, we are trying to keep things moving and, uh, and growing. Uh, Niv, how are you? Just fine, you know, regular times, all the pandemics, uh, usual year, <laughs> everything, everything back to usual, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, Greg, please uh, let's uh, introduce yourself to our, uh, you know, uh, listeners and viewers and uh, a little bit also about uh, your company. So uh, then we can uh, start uh, asking the hard question for you. So my name is Greg Moss. I'm the CEO of a company, Cloud Advise, uh, based here in New York City, uh, doing business all over the world. Uh, there's uh, two sides to our business. The first side of our business is focused really on the SMB markets, which are the small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, here, uh, we take on the role uh, of an outsourced procurement department, basically aligning ourselves with the chief technology group uh, and help them uh, identifying key vendors uh, that fit their particular needs, taking the administrative burdens off their shoulders uh, and making sure that their purchasing is done uh, in the right fashion. On the other side of the business, we're focused more on the enterprise, Uh, here, uh, we are engaged with both uh, technology chiefs as well as uh, procurement departments within Fortune 500 and Fortune 100 companies, essentially doing the same thing, uh, but more aligned as a research and advisory company, providing key data points in allowing them to select vendors, uh, again, with an infrastructure. Sounds very interesting company, believe it or not. Uh, you know, first for our preparation calls, when we made it... Um, I just was curious about what the company is doing. Now you're talking about S&P 500, it's really interesting. Um, I, I suggest you just jump in to, to the cloud because I guess your company knows something about cloud. Um, what are the biggest concerns you see from your experience in the companies regarding jumping into cloud from technical aspects? Let's take it. I mean, it's a really great question. And anyone who's had their ear to the market for the last decade uh, would see a trend. Um, we are seeing a lot of Kool-Aid drinking here in the U.S. That means kind of, uh, you know, listening to the trends and just making a decision based on a trend as opposed to what may be right for your company. And uh, there's a lot of unique things happening. Before I get into this, uh, I'd like to take a step back and kind of give you a little bit of perspective on the market. Um, there's early adopters and there's late adopters as it relates to cloud. Uh, the early adopters are ones that have chosen to go into any of the big three uh, about a decade ago, and that's Amazon, Azure, or GCP. Um, what we're finding now is all of these companies that uh, chose to be the early adopter, and, and most of these companies, just for point of reference, are companies that are very uh, technology-driven, forward thinkers, um, and ones that were easier to adopt this type of environment. But what we're seeing in a trend is the companies that started off 10 years ago are slowly now pulling out key components of their stack from the cloud and back into more traditional uh, types of hosting or even data center. And uh, the reason for this is really predicated around Um, where they operate the most efficiently, uh, both from an economic standpoint as well as a technical standpoint. Uh, so now let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to today, right? Let's call it the late adopters. Late adopters tend to be companies who uh, are less technically inclined or technically driven as a business, still rely heavily on technology, but they aren't technology companies. Uh, these are areas like legal, um, non-for-profit, healthcare, finance, um, you'll find that a lot of these types of companies within these industries are just now starting to adopt the cloud practice. And one of the big mistakes that are being made is they're saying, let's just go, put everything, put everything in the cloud. Let's put the entire uh, infrastructure uh, in the cloud. Uh, it's, it must be right. It must be right because our competition's doing it. Um, everyone's doing it, let's just do it. And I, you know, I think it's a big mistake. I think it's a mistake because Um, you know, you can only analyze or draft a TCO um, 
to a certain degree as it relates to the cloud. There's key components that you won't realize uh, will affect you both technically and economically until you're in it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, our goal is to try to dial back a bit and, and really understand a business's uh, focus uh, and uh, how they rely on technology to avoid, avoid some of these pitfalls, right? There's nothing like spending an enormous amount of money migrating to a new platform that you think will ultimately save you money just to find out that it's costing you more money. Now, by no means does this mean the cloud is a bad place. The cloud is a great place. It's, 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 it's innovative. It's allowed companies, uh, particularly, in, uh, particularly in areas like e-commerce to- Pop in, I'm popping questions, you know, it's really interesting to me. Uh, you're talking about you know, your vast experience in, in, in the S&P 500 companies that, uh, in, in advising them about cloud. So, so the, the early adopters, and I totally agree with you, the early adopters was, uh, almost uh, 10 years ago, uh, 12 years ago, when just uh, um, the cloud providers just started their business. Um, but now you're seeing, and it, it really interested me, um, you're seeing um, um, vice versa um, direction to some key factors, key elements of the, of the technology stack back to, to different hosting types. And, and I'm, perhaps this will pop up to the next question. Do you, from your experience, is it because some technical difficulties or economical ones or both? So here's the problem, right? Uh, most companies are struggling with headcount. I mean, if you look at most technology groups, they're understaffed, right? And then within being understaffed, you really have to determine whether or not um, do you qualify, right? Do you have people that can operate within the cloud, right? Or, or really just understand what hybrid means to them as a company. And in most cases, it's no, right? The, you know, the age old problem of hiring is still in existence. And as technology continues to evolve, it gets harder and harder to hire the right people. So let's imagine you're only at 70% capacity within your technology group, and you have a list of a hundred things that you need to accomplish as a business. And if you look at the orders of priority, you know, the priority is to keep the core functions of the business from a tech perspective operating and maybe moving to the cloud or finding out what hybrid means or um, anything for that matter, you know, falls to the bottom of that list, you know? So if you don't have the staff to do something, it doesn't matter, right? So, you know, I see companies operating in the cloud today that have, uh, that are spending 30% more than they should, but guess what? They're at a 70% headcount and they don't have the time or manpower to back out and truly understand what hybrid means. Yeah, so I think that, the... I think I think Nib, that uh, uh, if we, you know, uh, Greg is bringing a, a great global uh, global thinking and, and global knowledge. If we look here in Israel, we are um, you know the startup as yes the early early adopters, but you know the, our big uh, enterprise and SMBs or top SMBs. They are, you know, really in the earlier steps. And I think that one mistake, and I, I keep saying it uh, also in the public and also in close uh, uh, talks, uh, when I talk to CIOs, CTOs, etc., is that don't jump, don't run, you know, like crazy because everybody is talking about cloud. You need to think, you need to plan. And, uh, and the things that, that uh, you said is really, really a, a great advice to, uh, you know, to companies because uh, I believe that, yes, the hybrid uh, uh, way, uh, strategy will be the, the future of, you know, I don't know how many years, five, 10, and, and, and companies, you know, are if sometimes just playing and doing things instead of thinking, planning, building the strategy, and then there will be uh, also less mistakes and less uh, money uh, that they start, uh, just spend for nothing. Greg, I, I must add on a real things. You talked earlier in the call about the trends and, and, and you talked about two types of organizations. Let me add a, a third one. And I call them the, the trend organizations. And if all the companies are now doing big data, they will say they're doing big data because everybody's doing so. Um, and they're using technology as a target and not as a mean. And when I mean a mean, it's mean that if you're looking about to, to go and consume the right, uh, to consume cloud, the right approach for that, from, from my perspective, of course, yes, is to treat the cloud as a mean and not a target. You're using cloud, uh, and I totally agree with you, uh, the talent pr problem is, is, 
is the biggest problems we have in technology. So yes, the head counts, the employee uh, quality experience, etc. And when you're working with services on, on cloud, it's starting to raise a bigger question. And because you are now um, counting more about the cloud providers and eventually in, in the future years, you will lose more talents than you were just needed and you coupled to the cloud provider. That's okay if you understand what you're doing and that's popping me to the next questions. Perhaps what is the biggest concerns from your experience from economic uh, economical uh, the, uh, standpoint? Is 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 the, is the problem of lift and shift exists? So I mean, listen. Any any time you move infrastructure, there's two things associated with it: cost and risk. Um, you know. So with that being said, you try to limit the amount of time times that you lift and shift your infrastructure, whether it's going from data center to cloud cloud to managed hosting, managed hosting to data center. It's irrelevant. Nobody wants, nobody in their right mind wants to move infrastructure more than they have to, right? Just because of the pure cost and risks associated. So think about it like this. Imagine taking a risk and incurring a cost to move into an environment that's gonna ultimately cost you more money. It doesn't make sense, right? So what I'm saying is if you could take the appropriate amount, by, being, by not being in the cloud today, you're not losing. Let's put it that way. What you're doing is you're actually saving and you're uh, taking the time to really understand your infrastructure and what does hybrid mean to your infrastructure. And if you do that properly and you take the extra cycles and the extra amount of time, you're going to find yourself in a much better situation uh, for, your for, your, for your company to grow and scale. Okay. So if you are looking at the, you know, if you look at the, all the companies that you see and uh, you advise to them, if you can share like uh, uh, best practices, uh, you know, uh, summarize uh, like what are the best practices to, uh, to adopt a uh, uh, public cloud? Sure. So I think what every company should first do is uh, they should understand what the three buckets are that involves a hybrid solution, right? And those three buckets are data center, custom managed hosting, and public cloud. If you take these three infrastructure, three, if you take these three types of infrastructure, these are what make up a hybrid environment. So you wanna somehow figure out how does my st technology stack or stacks fit into each one of these buckets. And um, once you could do that, you can understand what hybrid means to your company. Now, granted, it's not that easy, right? You may not have the talent or the time on board to uh, figure this out. So one of our big suggestions is uh, are to engage an MSP, which stands for a managed service provider, um, who has done this, right? Someone who is a pure play MSP that comes in and helps you understand what hybrid means to your business. And um, if you invest in a company like this, um, you'll, you'll leave it to the experts, right? They'll come in and they'll work side by side with your team uh, to truly make sure that the, the, next, the next stage of your infrastructure fits um, again, both economically and te technically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nif, can you summarize maybe the, our episode? So, so, you know, it was really interesting uh, to hear that um, even, even uh, and, and that's perhaps my takeaway from your conversation, even if you are, uh, let's say, early adopter for, for any technology trend or technology transformation or evolution, um, don't fear to recalculate your, your, your routes or uh, re recalculate, yeah, re recalculate your steps, let's say, um, in, in the next future. So, and yes, if that's the, the right approach for you, so let's go to consume services on cloud. But be aware, be aware of the cost, be aware of the technical difficulties that you just men mentioned. Um, and, 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 and then try just to, to recap one thing. If I will try to ask you a question, what is the biggest concern and the biggest pitfalls you see in an organization when they're moving to cloud? What, what's popping on your mind? The, the biggest is the cost. You know, people don't see the hidden costs within the transfer and other areas within the cloud. So they do their analysis and they see a savings or they see an at par cost. And when they're there and operating, the next thing you know, they're 20, 30, 40% over budget and they're trying to figure out why. And at this point it's too late. 
right? You've committed to leadership, you've committed to your board, you've committed to customers, and you're now operating in an environment that is essentially uh, hurting your EBITDA as a business. I, I think that also the, compl uh, the, co the complexity that is uh, involved, sometimes people look, okay, we take only one uh, workload, one app, and it's really a little bit more uh, uh, difficult than to do, you know, just a, a few things that you want to do. Uh, okay, so uh, I think that is uh, what's a great episode, Greg. I think that our uh, viewers and listeners learn a lot. So if they want to reach you, how they can uh, connect you or your company? So that's great. So, I mean, we can always help, uh, you know, help put you in touch with an MSP. We can also help give you kind of top line guidance on, on making a transition like this. Uh, www.cloudadvise.net, uh, or you can reach out to our local team in Israel, um, which uh, again can be reached via uh, info at cloudadvise.net. Okay, great. So thank you very much, Greg and uh, Niv. Thank you very much. You are on mute <laughs> now. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> it was great. Thank, thank you, Niv. Thank you, thank you guys. Oh, take care. Bye. It was nice. Bye-bye.